Okay, so um, on the on the left column here, I have summarized the steps for how we pick changes and they get deployed to staging right now. And it is summarized like it's broken down into five steps. We have the chat ops command to create the stable branch. Then the developer adds a label to an MR. Um, we issue a chat ops command to pick the MR into the stable branch. Um, and then we issue a command to, after, after it gets into the stable branch, then uh, we issue a command to tag the release and the release is deployed to staging. There's some other like more details here, but it's very high level. Sorry, just um, mark something here. Sure. So this is manual trigger, right? Yes. This is manual. Yes. Manual. Yes. Manual. And automated. Automated. Yes. So, um, first one is we're in auto deploy. We're going to be automatically creating these branches, and they're called auto deploy branches. Um, most of this is done. Uh, we have like the tasks to create the GitLab EE Omnibus GitLab and Deployer branch. I put some to-dos or some questions here. Do we want to also create a branch on GitLab CE? We have to. We, we have, have to. to. So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, does the branch name end in EE, or does it, uh, is it the branch name going to be different for GitLab CE and EE? A lot for them to be the same, if possible. Then again, though, we have this convention everywhere on yeah. the prepared branches, on the stable branches, where on EE it ends in EE, on CE it doesn't. Exactly, that's the problem. And why do we actually use the EE? Because we don't then have to supply uh, EE I'm environmental I'm, variable. But right? I'm setting that. Ex I'm being explicit anyway. You're setting it. Yeah, I think. Well, we haven't done that part yet because that's uh, down. Um, you know, uh, down here, let's, but so I would say we keep put a, yeah. put a pin on it and let's decide uh, later. Okay. If anything, I'd say we want it. We want nothing to end in dash e. Yeah. Exactly. The only reason we have a dash e is because of omnibus. Exactly. So let's put a pin in it until we get to that point. Okay. And I'll just say you can maybe. use the black marker as well. Yeah, that's a good just, idea, actually. Oh, your red one. Depends on what you prefer. Ah, perfect. Um, so, this side. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this just stays the same. There's no change here. Developer still creates an MR, he puts the pick label. Then we have. So we remain. Yeah. All right. Um, RM issues a chat up. So, um, so for the CI picking the MR into the auto deploy branch, I have some questions here. We have to decide what do we do when there are conflicts. I think we should treat those the same way we do with our current process, which is just to mark yeah mark it as un unmergeable. Unmergeable. Add a comment to the MR that Add says just like we have now. Say this can't be merged. Yeah, um, I would, would to add another thing though. I would love to extend it so we could remove the pick label if that's something that's worth doing because I don't want to pick it in the future until that MR is touched by the development fix. It's I necessary. think we would want to be explicit there and leave it, leave the pick label and next time it comes around the bot should leave another message. But I think we should possibly expand it to uh, at mentioned the uh, uh, author. Yeah. So Ed mentioned the author, I was not able to pick this. Um, please, you know, create an MR with resolve conflicts or something like that, or rebase on top of the branch Should we or something add a new like label that. indicating that at this point in time? I think we should be something. super annoying with it. I think we should just uh, leave labels as they are with yeah. picking to. Um, because one of the problems we had with security uh, automation was you have this silent reassign, yeah. you know, and we slipped one or two times with it. So if we just leave the comment every time we try to pick it, it's going to yeah, act mention. It. We couldn't make this. We couldn't, yeah. Exactly. Well, we couldn't pick, pick it, it, but I would love to tag the author in that yeah, comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Tag the author. Just say, like, to author. Author, I couldn't. Actually, author and reviewer. Yeah. How do we know who reviewed it? Hmm? Who reviewed it? Oh, sure. Author and sign. Yeah, author and I'm saying. So author and reviewer. 
Yeah, author and assignee, like you use the GitLab terms. Okay. Um, I think the answer to this, if we're creating the GitLab CE branch, we're going to probably pick into the GitLab CE. Yeah, and then, and then do a merge. Yeah. Is that? I can't wait for the single code base. This is so many workarounds. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not even sure that our API supports. The API doesn't. But, it doesn't. but the, um, we can't use the API for the CE to EE merge anyway. Right. You know, we'll have to use merge train for that. That's what I'm saying. Like, as long as we're having okay. to like, check it out for cherry picking, we might as well just do a merge. Probably. Cherry picking a bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, True. True. So, after all of these changes have been picked into the repos, and maybe even we've done the merge via the merge train or something, now everything's on GitLab.com. Do we push then to dev, or do we let the, because the repo sync will do this, it's a protected branch, auto-deploy, do we just let the repo sync do it? No. Or do we do an explicit push to dev? We do explicit push to dev. Make sure it works, right? Exactly, yeah. um, because the uh, mirroring works until it stops, and then when it stops, it actually emails a maintainer, I think, or something like that, and you know, no one does any, any action on it because it's not really actionable. You just say, have like, oh, mirroring is not working for some reason. And the last thing I just added is how do we handle security picks? Maybe we just say this is TBD for now. Um, security picks from? For, from dev, so security MRs that we want to auto-deploy and these would be unreleased changes um, so this is where that communicate or discussion we had on um, on the design doc is coming into play because if we have um, so the source of truth for deployment is that GitLab org, right? Yeah. Um, that source of truth should be receiving updates from um, security repositories, not directly from GitLab.com repositories, as in not from public but from security ones. Yeah. So that's why we should leave this to be decided. Because that requires more work. Okay, so number four. Um, so this is automated or semi-automated, or it's actually automated. Except for the security part, yeah, it's all automated. Yeah. But I think this could potentially be automated in the sunny As well. day, in the sunny day scenario where there's no problems. Yeah, yeah. Is it um, fully automated, or we have to pick off a chat? No, I was thinking mm -hmm. this. This is fully automated. This is something that no, but you need to keep. No, this is fully automated. This is, this yeah. is automated. Yeah, yeah. We don't know yet how frequently it will run, but we were thinking but maybe once a day. Yeah, once a day. Yeah, once a day is fine for now. So this, these used to be, the, well, we were thinking these were together, but I think we decided that maybe yesterday that these may be separate things, which is to find a commit um, on the auto-deploy branch and trigger an omnibus mm -hmm. because um, we have to wait. After we do this picking, we have to wait for the, the CI pipeline to yes. finish mm -hmm. before we actually trigger an omnibus pipeline. Yeah. So I have a question here is like, when and, or how often does it run? Now maybe if this is running once a day, this just runs also once a day. Yeah. But then how do we know that we didn't already trigger the same ref? Because we don't want to actually, I don't think we want to like go through this whole packaging on the same ref over like every hour, right? We don't want to deploy the same thing over and over again either. That's just unnecessary. Yeah, I mean like these are, every one of these Omnibus package pipelines results in a package upload into package cloud and it's, yeah. it's you know. What's the format of the package? What's the name of the currently, package? In, in currently the, so the RF branch thing? RF branch with the CI. ID. ID and the Omnibus uh, shop. Shop. Yeah. If so, you trigger a build on Omnibus that it's already built packages for, will it just. They will build another one because the, because the CI pipeline ID, ID is changed. different. Oh, right. Um, so I, maybe we can just say TBD for now. We'll, we can figure it out. Like, I don't know, like, this is just a matter of storing state. We yeah, could a couple of options there. Mm -hmm. We could exploit the CI variable. CI there. variable. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But that's really exploiting things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Forget well, I that. feel like we should be able to rename the package and put maybe the SHA of what we're deploying. The SHA is already there for the omnibus part. Right? Yeah, but that's going to stay the same through multiple. Yeah, that will stay the same as but if omnibus doesn't change. 
that Shaw's not going to change. But the problem is, remember, both Omnibus changes and GitLab CE changes can result in a change, right? So you would actually have to put both Shaw's. That's annoying. So yeah. I, 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 I kind of like, actually like that solution. I kind of dislike it a lot. How well, about what else do we have? How about we revisit our discussion about tagging? Tagging. We said tagging was cheap. Okay. Yeah, Let's I guess tag. I heard this makes more sense to me than a CI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we git tag, we fi figure out what kind of tag we want to have. Because git is storing state. CI variables is already Exactly. Yeah. True. Exactly. And CI variables are not very transparent, so we cannot even understand what's happening there. Right. So if we tag, then we can figure out wh how we want to name it, and if the tag already exists, um, so do a check first. Does the tag exist? Yes, it does. Then you're done. And no package created, no deployment done. I'm not actually following how the the tag would prevent this because I see. So if the tag is already uh, so, so we tag every commit that we auto deploy and then. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you say that you yeah. find a green commit, right? On yeah. deploy, deploy, and trigger a package and deploy. This would change into uh, find a green commit uh, yeah. on the auto, auto deploy branch tag. Yeah. And then. Um, the tag will decide the rest, right? Plus like, the name of the tag. Okay, so that we need to decide. We need to have to be descriptive enough to understand what it is. And we well, do need first of all, we, we need, need the C E or E SHA. We need E SHA for omnibus. sure. And we need Omnibus SHA. So e SHA short SHA of both kind mm -hmm. of hyphenated or whatever. Yeah. And then if you really want to get crazy, you can SHA that value. So we just have a single SHA. No, and that's not transparent. That's, yeah. That's true. You that's have a little too much. Yeah. yeah. So let's, can we check the my branch name? Give me a sec for the format. Um, so it's like, uh, it's like 11, 10 plus yeah, here or it is. branch. Can you write it down somewhere in the empty? So 11 yeah. dot 10 dot 0 dash rf branch dash, dash rf branch dot 109442 dot 3ae15 it's a sha right yeah it's a sha dash 0 dash 0 is automatically added right so it looks like um like rf branch rf branch like is just RF. Hmm? Oh, sorry. It's good. You should say that. Our branch is just a name that we figured out because of the uh, naming, package naming um, constraints. So, for example, um, the reason why this is F is because it is after RC. Huh. Right? So, um, this would cons be considered like if you install an RC and then you install R branch on top of it, then it's an upgrade. If we set yeah. RB, then it would be considered a downgrade. That's packaging standards. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Why not RD? Hmm? Why not RD? Um, I don't know. And, and you know what? Yeah. You know what happened last night is that I built a bunch of these, uh -huh. and the ops instance is automatically in a cron job updating to the latest build and staging. So it, it it automatically updated to the auto deploy build. All right. Which actually wasn't nice. No, 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 no. <laughs> too much but automation. I, I, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Automation. So um, yeah, because of that reason. So um, yeah. Here's the problem with this part. This part is whatever we set in our version file once we uh, cut a stable branch. Right. So the reason why this is eleven ten zero is because no one up. Exactly, no one updated the master branch to say 11.11. We never know. Which is Wait, we know when we tag. We do, we have to, right? When we tag 11.10.0, uh -huh. it does get updated. It, it comes 11.11.0 pre. 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 Or no, 11.10 yeah. pre? 11.11 11 11 11 pre. I think, I it's, think the next, it. it's the next one. The yeah. next pre, I, think. I think we bump it because on major upgrades we have to go in there manually and yeah. set it to 12. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, obviously, like, Changing this now would be a problem, but this we can change to something else. 
So as long as we keep that the, you know, R <laughs> needs to remain, and if we want to increment it here, and we can name this the, whichever way we want, and then we can remove, like, oh, actually, we cannot remove the pipeline ID. So the reason for this is, if you have, um, if you have the E E S H A remaining the same, is this documented anywhere else? An omnibus somewhere it is. <laughs> No, that's how I'm keeping my job, yeah. uh, Robert. <laughs> so, if omnibus doesn't change and if e doesn't change, you do not have then um, a way to force a package build. Again, the package will remain the same. So we need the omnibus pipeline ID, but this, but this is like we can't use this as part of the tag because we no. don't know it yet. No, um, but we definitely need the omnibus. Sha, sha. Mm -hmm. um, e e sha for sure, and e e sha. So should the tag just use these two things? Well, why do we need the pipeline? Eddie? You were you were. This is about the, to explain. <clears throat> this is the package version, right? Yeah. This is the package version. So the sha, uh, the tag, the tag actually would. Um, remain the same, which means it wouldn't be uh, rebuilding the package. We would abort a package build before um, because we would try to create a tag and it already exists and that would fail. And the way we would rebuild this package if we needed to is delete the tag, mm -hmm. basically, right? Just delete the tag and the automation will, will create it again yeah. and tag the rest. And then this allows us to have the package remain whichever way we decide, basically. The thing, though, is if we start tagging, then we have another problem in Omnibus, and that is um, how, do we, um, how, how do we make a distinction between yeah. the final release that we want to release to public and the auto-deploy? Because a lot of logic in Omnibus is tied to tag versus it branches. Is, it is. Um, I mean, we can use uh, a CI. I think we can use a CI variable just on a deploy equals true, which is what I'm doing now in the CI pipeline, mm -hmm. to limit the number of stages that are run and also to auto deploy right now to pre prod instead of staging. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that will be fine, but I'm still like, what is what is the tag going to look like? It's going to be 11. So the tag will be like 11, 10, and then. No, the, t the tag should be 11.10.0. Okay, eleven dot ten dot zero, and then let's use or maybe eleven dot ten, right? Because I don't think we want to include. No, you're right. You're so right. Eleven dot ten. Eleven ten. And then dash. Then mm -hmm. Um, I would say e e sha. Okay. Which is a bit strange to have a sha in a tag because the tag kind of like. Sure. Yeah. But I guess it, well, but it needs it if it's the same as this. Then yeah, we need yeah. it. Okay. So, e -E -Sha. yeah, and omnibus. then omnibus sha. And that's it. And that's it. That's for the tag. And maybe the tag. Um, maybe we stick an auto deploy in here so it's clear or not. No, I mean you, when you see this and you see all these weird numbers in there and letters. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here's another question. Um, how is this gonna affect um, us switching to non-omnibus deploys? Well, I mean, I think okay, the omnibus so, shot doesn't matter in that case, right? Omnibus shot does not matter in that case. But uh, where did we? Where did we? There we go. So CI finds a green commit on the auto deploy branch and tags. Can I? Uh, yeah. And tags. And mm -hmm. triggers a package yeah. plus deploy. So this part we need to think about like how do we make this a bit more robust so that any switch, any change we can add like another mm -hmm. step. Mm -hmm. So. If we tag here, huh, but if we tag here, we don't have the omnibus shot. 
Um, but right. with find, this finds a green commit, not only this this will actually find a commit in Omnibus GitLab as well, I assume. No, right? Not currently, but it can. But I think it would need. To. I mean, it's, for Omnibus, it's very, very easy. Like, if the if the build fails, the package won't build, right? Like, so it's not really super necessary. Obviously, it would be nice to have the green build, but if it complicates things, I don't know. Like, my my only concern is. Um, we are going to add more steps, right? It's not only going to be uh, installing a package. We are working towards con like using containers as well. Mm -hmm. So if we make a decision here um, that is going to rule out us using another system, yeah. um, I would like to make it a bit more robust if possible. Right. Martin, if the omnibus tests are failing, yeah, we don't do that step where we find a green build for omnibus. Do we create a situation where we've created this tag Omnibus triggers, the build fails, the tag still exists, so we never re Yeah, we would have it. to we would well you we would have to fix something in Omnibus, which means shallow change. Sure. Okay. So you would have to retag. Yeah. Um if it was an intermediate failure, you can retry it. Uh and like the nuclear op nu nuclear option is remove the tag yeah. and but, do it again. But just to be clear, right, we're creating these auto deploy branches on Omnibus GitLab as well. So we should find a green commit. On the on, on the auto deploy branch on Omnibus GitLab, right? I don't think it's necessary, no. Why Here, not? Like, why not treat Omnibus? Because that way you could pick changes into Omnibus GitLab you, the same way you're picking changes into GitLab EE, right? Right, but there is like two things that that um, that you need to care about in Omnibus. Then uh, the the specs running on GitLab.com mm -hmm. and the build like package build running on that mm -hmm. GitLab.org. We have that separate, so you would have to like make logic that says. Find me green commit on .com and find me green commit on that GitLab.org and then decide if both are green. Um, but that's what uh, Robert has done already, or you're, that's what you're proposing, right? Is you're finding Omnibus. the green commit on GitLab.com and ensuring that it's also on dev. That's what we're doing for CD and E and we can easily add it for Omnibus. Yeah. I would say do the same. We just give it a different project. I would say do the same. Like, I would like to shoot to treat Omnibus the same as GitLab EE for these auto deploy branches and Yeah. Okay. I'm, sense. I'm I'm fine with that if we're not adding like too much overhead because yeah. uh, Omnibus needs to be green or rather Omnibus will fail. Like it just won't build. Right, right, yeah. Design. So it's like you kind of guarantee you have a green pipeline just by that fact. Right. Exactly. That it's gonna Exactly. But yeah. if you're seeing that it's not problematic to just expand this a bit more to add Omnibus, then fine. Because if you make it generic enough, we can, um, you know, not only depend on Omnibus, but also have whatever else we add on top, right? Like building the, the containers, uh, container images that we want to do as yeah. well. So there as well, it's going to be the same problem, right? If the image won't build, then there is nothing to deploy mm -hmm. to begin. But I guess for consistency sake, yeah, sure. But keep it green, I guess. Okay, let's see how it works out. Yeah. Okay, so this. But then, what does uh, this tag become? I assume that this would be the SHA of the the green build on dev for EE, and this yeah. is the SHA of the green build on dev for Omnibus GitLab, which is the latest green build on the auto deploy branch. Right, that's fine. But what I'm asking again is if I add another project here, which is Charts, for example. What does yeah. that become then? Well, we could have a new SHA. Like, you just keep on adding. So you have a different SHA if you have, I guess, two I tags. Oh. I'm, so I'm, this is where the problem starts, um, because we are treating Omnibus as one of the sources of truth. Uh, we have a problem of expanding this further. So we are building a, a lot of this on Omnibus and we are reaching a point where we need to have a better source of truth. This is the point where we need a manifest project? Yeah. yeah. This is the point where we need a manifest project. But that's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And I don't think we can get away with that at the moment. So keeping it simple, I guess we need to continue with what we have described here okay. and that is omnibus uh, is in, included and once we get to the point I guess 
I think as soon as we start adding another project, this is the point where we need to think about um, making a better versioning system for GitLab. Because versioning is the hardest thing to do in any software. And now we, uh, I think, reached the point. Okay, so I think it's a good plan. It kind of sucks because the omnibus pipeline changes that I worked on are going to have to be refactored for this because they didn't assume a tag before, but maybe it won't be that bad. It won't. If you said that you're passing auto deploy uh, yeah, environmental yeah, variable, yeah, but it's there's a lot of it, it's a, it's really messy because of all the um, tag tagging conditions that are built into the pipeline that I were taking for granted. I was taking for granted that we would, didn't have a tag, which would. So I just need to add a, more conditionals and hopefully. Um, the only accept logic is really like it's very limited. I'll, uh, I can look to, together with you today uh, yeah. inside of Omnibus and like see what kind of changes because if it means rewriting the whole YAML uh, section of Omnibus, which is already too big, um, even after the splitting in, in like multiple f files, yeah. we might need to rethink this whole thing. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look or we'll see. Um, so. We have this, right? Um, we have that as... <laughs> yeah, we just need to add the GitLab CE branch. GitLab CE branch. And... Um, it doesn't and, end in the EE. And we're not sure about that. All right. But that's, at least that part is like, we're pretty good there. Um, let's, let's decide dash EE. All right? I'm, I lean more towards keeping the... GitLab EE repo with the dash EE and the GitLab CE without the dash EE, but that's just because it's consistent with the stable branches. What well, let's keep it consistent for now, and when we do the single code base, you know, we get rid of that. Yeah. What do you think, man? Do you think we should just I don't think have the same branch name on both? Like the thing is, I'm I'm kind of fearful that with all changes, all the changes that uh, single code base is bringing. Um, we we don't need another place where we need to remember uh, to change things around, yeah. and because these branches are auto deploy branches, are temporary branches to begin with, it feels like a bit redundant to have dash e in them, especially if you say that you are passing e and variable. Yeah. So that's why I feel like because that also helps. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would I would remove dash e. Robert, okay. what do you think? Yeah, anywhere we can get rid of. Okay. Dash e yeah, would be in favor of it. Okay. So remove dash e. X. Hmm. And then <laughs> I say that, and then there's like all this special case handling in release tools for like, oh, it's e. Yeah. Just throw e on there. Yes, exactly. So I don't know what's gonna break if we don't do that. But I'm interested to find out. Yeah, I think we should find out. Okay, so I can, I'll do this. Yeah. Today. Um, I'm already still working on the auto picker stuff, so. The oh, this, this one. This one. Yeah. So this stays the same. Yeah, this yeah. one. But this one. See, I picked the MR. All right. Uh, we'll uh, we'll continue working on that together. Okay. So what decisions did we make? How do we handle uh, security picks will have to stay uh, the same way at the moment? This one will have to um, uh, trigger, yeah. trigger Omnibus with tag. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll see how bad this is. That I'm, I'm already getting a bit concerned with that one. I know how much uh, yeah. logic we the have. The problem is you change one thing and then you have unintended side effects. Exactly. You know, exactly. Um, but I'll... Yeah. And this remains the same, this is the only thing, so this is the tag. This is the... Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. So, cool. I do have to ask another question. Yeah. Every time I see this board, or think about this, yeah. what makes it so complicated in our use cases? Like, how are our customers doing this? 
It's impossible that they have full teams just dealing with this stuff. <laughs> Um, given that we have a mono repo, it's very, or something like similar to a mono repo, it's very surprising how complicated it is. Uh, 